Hitchcock 45 here. Well, actually, I'm not here yet, but I'll be here directly in the video you're about to watch. And what you're about to watch is a video that John and I recorded before we fully understood the new uh, YouTube terms of service, all right? So we have edited mainly the uh, sponsorship spots, okay? So you'll see a few edit points in this video. And because of that, we want to be sure to thank the people that support us. One of them is Buds. You know Buds? A fixture in the industry. Been with us for over 10 years. Great company. Also, Silencer Central. High, high quality company. And they do one thing really, really well. And you got to love that, don't you? Also, the Sonoran Desert Institute, sdi.edu. You can get certified in gunsmithing. You can take all sorts of great courseware there from a distance. As well, uh, Alabama Holster. You know that I love them. Been using those for a long time. Great little Kydex concealment holsters. We really appreciate everybody that helps us out and has been loyal to us. So, especially you all, right? <laughs> so anyway, enjoy the video. Hickok 45 here with Old Reliable, the 1874 Sharps, known by lots of names. Features Bible, uh, Poison Slinger, you name it. It was, uh, it was very reliable and it would sling some poison. And it was used to hunt buffalo. You want to try that? Let's shoot one if we can. All right, we got a buffalo. That's the important thing. If we don't hit anything else, that's all that matters, right? This old buffalo rifle. Yeah, we thought, uh, hey, it's a, it's 19, uh, well, no, it's 2024. And this is the uh, model that came out in 1874. And my Kentucky math tells me that's 150 years that this baby has been around since it came about, at least the 1874 model. Lots of versions of it from, I think, around... 1858, you know, and up through about 1881. Uh, the early uh, paper cartridge, uh, breech loading, you know, uh, percussion versions of it. Those were very popular. Lots of those, you know, uh, all through uh, the, the 1850s and 60s. And uh, so I think a lot of us think of it more as this configuration, you know, cartridge gun. But this is one firearm that was very popular, very effective, very strong uh, for a long time before, you know, it was chambered in 4570 or the uh, standard cartridges we all know and love in the 1870s. Uh, but it was the design of it uh, lent itself well to the transition. So it's not some totally different firearm, you know, once cartridges came along. In fact, if you're at a gun show and you see these lying around, you know they're old, uh, or not, or maybe reproductions of old ones or whatever. I have to study them. Well, is that a, what model is that? Is that a uh, 1874 or does that go back into the percussion age? You know, I have to look at it closely. So uh, really a fine rifle, uh, very pop, it, it's popular, but it's really been popularized by, uh, by books and movies and that kind of thing. You've all seen probably Quigley Down Under, uh, Valdez is Coming, a great movie where it's featured and just uh, known for an effective long range or short range uh, rifle, huh? So I thought 150 years, you know, I'll let John do the 200 year celebration, but I want to do the 150 year celebration uh, and just shoot it. Gives me an excuse to shoot it and talk a little bit about it. I don't know everything about them. I just have always liked them. And I actually, before Quigley Down Under came about, uh, but it's uh, just, they're just really neat rifles. There's something about a single shot rifle that I like so much that I'm gonna shoot it again right now. You want me to do that? <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a shot. Uh, many of you have seen this around uh, here on the channel. I guess I brought it out on Sunday morning videos probably two or three times over the years. And uh, it's just nice. Why don't we just uh, shoot? Let's clean up the range a little bit and shoot that Clorox bottle. Yeah, so <laughs> pretty nice. Uh, you you cock it to the first notch before you lever it. You know, it's good for not breaking the firing pin and all that. And uh, yeah, these things have been around a long time. Uh, like I say, back in the 1850s in Bleeding, Kansas. Uh, this was at Henry Ward Beecher. 
was a strong, uh, famous uh, abolitionist, and uh, they supplied their forces with, with these things. In the 1850s, like I said, uh, those would have been the percussion versions, right? Uh, breech loading, the paper cartridge. So these were never really loaded you know, from the muzzle, don't think. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, they were loaded back here. Because you could get to the, you know, the breech. And uh, yeah, and then, then gosh, just uh, used uh, the, um, as I understand, the shorter versions were even more popular. You know, Civil War days is just very, very, very popular. And I see those and I think, ah, that'd be cool to have one of those that goes back into the Civil War era, you know, 1863 or four or five or something. But then again, I, I don't know about the loading the paper cartridges and that. I've never done that with one of these. I, I enjoy muzzle loaders, but uh, you know, it's just kind of a different animal. Maybe I'll get into that sometime. So then I, I think I read that these actually, this configuration was made as early as 1871 uh, and was being made and they were out there, but it's called the 1874. And I guess it's sort of the final version. There were a lot of variations of it and it was in so many different chamberings. The, the big 50 you've heard, right? It's in 50 caliber, various 50 calibers, 40 calibers, 45 calibers, uh, you name it and available in all barrel lengths and weights uh, and probably is considered even more instrumental in the uh, buffalo hunting era than it, it was. I have read that. If you, you know, know differently, let me know. So many people use the old trap doors, the, uh, the Civil War rifles, uh, muskets and everything and, and other firearms and these were a little expensive and they may be not as readily available there are a lot of people who think and i may have been of that opinion at one point that everybody was out buffalo hunting had one of these babies you know sharps you know uh but but not everybody uh, although they were they were used uh, a lot uh, in the 50 caliber so so what do you want me to shoot what do you want me to shoot at you know this is just a fun video chance to shoot this some more this one is the montana rough rider it's called it's 18 a variation of the 1874 and like i said it, all kinds of stock configuration pistol grip no pistol grip you know it got the little pewter touch on this one and uh you know a fairly heavy barrel uh i was looking for one that was handier than the first one i had that was longer than this and this one's shorter but you know it's, it's got a pretty hefty uh, chunk of steel there for the barrel and uh, my ideal sharps for what I do with it, I just like carry it around the place and plink with it. Doesn't everybody plink with a 4570? And uh, you know, it could be a little bit lighter, but it's okay the way it is. It's just a gorgeous rifle. I was telling John, I think before the video, that I, it just, and that wood seems to get better looking, you know, every year. And uh, I've, I've really enjoyed this one. It's, it's nice. You know, made famous uh, in so many ways, uh, Quigley Down Under, maybe the number one uh, movie that it's featured in, of course. And uh, as I said, Valdez is coming. Uh, you might have heard of uh, the phenomenal shot that Billy Dixon made with one. I think it was a 50 caliber. Uh, it was uh, at around a mile, the second battle of Adobe Walls in the Texas Panhandle. And that was, I think that was in 1874. And there were 28 or 30 uh, buffalo hunters out there kind of I don't know, camped in that area, whatever, and they were kind of surrounded by, I don't know, you, you know, you're getting everything secondhand, but it was like 700 to 1,000 Indians, American Indians. And, uh, and they were in battle for about three days. And the buffalo hunters being excellent shots, uh, held them off at bay, uh, which was pretty amazing in the first place. And then as the story goes, on around the third day, uh, they were seeing the the Indians out at about a, a mile away, and Billy Dixon grabbed one of the 50 caliber rifles and took a shot and actually hit him, hit one of them, and then uh, they decided to just move on after that, you know, because that was pretty unbelievable uh, shots. But that's a famous, famous shot. Many of you heard of that. If if I got the story wrong, uh, sorry about that. I, I ain't that smart. <laughs> And I can't shoot that well either, but these are famous for being accurate at long range. I want to shoot a couple things here. I don't know. Like, uh, I want to thank Alabama Holster for their support of the channel. Great little uh, Kydex holsters, concealment holsters. I don't think they make anything for this yet. I don't know what's wrong with them. Uh, we want to try something a little unusual. 
like uh, an underwood extreme penetrator just for <laughs> the heck <laughs> we we get uh, some red grade ammo from underwood and Steinel and uh, uh, Fiocchi appreciate their help and I'm just going to shoot one of these they tell me I should just shoot lead bullets but I, and I do that mostly but I mean this thing was made 10 years ago or whatever it was modern steel it should handle some different things what would be good to shoot uh, an extreme penetrator with let's see uh, let's just knock let's swing that bowling pin right there Boom. I bet it went right through it. Yeah. Let's shoot a lead bullet now. Have we hit the gong yet? If we're going to celebrate 150 years, we cannot ignore the gong, right? I think I might have gone low. I do believe. Oh, yeah, this is fun. This is fun. Uh, I found this one at Shiloh Sharps. It was in their showroom or whatever online, and I didn't have to order it and wait five years. That's why I got this configuration. It's what they had, but I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that might have bounced into it because I, I let it get off a little too soon. It, it, once you set the trigger, oh man, it is a hair trigger. All right, I'm gonna hold up a little bit. Yeah, see that was a more solid hit. I was actually holding right on it where I should. All right, 4570. This gun was so well built uh, that that falling block style was so strong that it could be chambered for just about anything. You know, the 50s, the big 50s, uh, uh, really powerful rounds. And I think if I was going to order one, maybe I'd go ahead and get the big 50. I don't know. Uh, 4570 is just hard to argue with because it's a nice big round and it's widely available. Uh, it doesn't knock you around too badly and all that. It's just a, a fun round to shoot. But isn't that a beautiful firearm? See the way it works? It's, that big block is mortised into the side. It's, you know, you can put a really powerful round in there and that comes up from behind it and protects it. Uh, so... Just, just nice, really nice. You can have all kinds of decoration you know, on the stock and these things. And uh, I don't know if you want one, if you're interested in some of you have them. You know, share what what you have or like. There are uh, a wide, there is a wide range price wise. You know, the Italians uh, make some really nice ones. My very first one was a Parasole, I think. It was an Italian made one. It was very, very nice. I had it not long after I moved out here and I loved that thing. Shot it and shot it. And uh, I don't know what I traded it for. And then I stumbled into a gun shop in Triune, Tennessee one day and someone had ordered a couple of these things and then couldn't buy one of them or, or something like that. And I actually was able to buy that thing right there in that gun shop, which is almost unheard of. Like I say, generally you have to order them and, uh, and wait uh, several years. But it had a really long barrel, and I, I don't know, and a nice vernier sight and all that, but I don't know, the way I shoot, I didn't really take advantage of it. If you're out at like 500 yards or something, maybe that's uh, more appealing. I just wanted one a little handier like this I could plink around with <laughs> and enjoy. All right, let me shoot the thing. What, what else, what else do we have here? Uh, I might shoot a black powder round before we quit, but let's pop a couple things here. It is a celebration. Let's just enjoy that. And, you know, like I say, if you haven't seen either of those two movies, you should really watch them. And if you know any others where it's uh, kind of featured and it's fun to watch it, uh, shoot, uh, you know, share that. Uh, Valdez is coming. It might be one that you haven't seen. Everybody knows about Quigley, if you're a gun person. But uh, Valdez is coming. It's Burt Lancaster and other uh, well-known actors. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful movie. I think. But what do I know? Let's go over there and uh, get a ram, one of our logos. Let's put the set trigger in. Now it's a hair trigger. Yep, there we go. So some of the shots on Buffalo have been further away than that, of course, quite a few of them. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fun gun. And what else would you love to know about it? uh yeah 150 years and the, the the simplicity of a firearm like this is one of the appeal uh the appeals of it you know like a muzzle loader 
it's just what's going to break i don't know what the number is there's probably eight ten parts to the gun or something and just the simplicity of it the functionality of it is very appealing of course i got it lengthened you know i always have to lengthen a little bit here's the butt plate you see what it's supposed to look like and uh it just fits me like a glove with this extender on it and you got your set trigger uh, which uh, many of them had there's probably some that didn't for those who don't know you cock it pull that rear trigger and then that turns the front trigger into a hair trigger as they say if you breathe on it it's going off and of course the only way that is safe and the way you want that is you're up on you're up on target more or less then you pull the rear one and then you just breathe on that other one and it goes off it, why well it makes you more accurate you know the lighter trigger you have whether you're shooting a 1911 or you know, a handgun or anything it's just that you generally don't want it too light a trigger on you know, a practical firearm often it, it can get a little you know dicey you know you get your finger near it on it before you meant to that sort of thing but with a big old rifle like this kind of a target rifle or hunting you're you're up and that's when you do it then you you know you're not gonna accidentally hit something you didn't mean to you're up here ready to shoot so you set the trigger and then there you go so no charge for that oh man what else uh the, the history like i say there were a lot of variations of it you could order it in any barrel length weight and all that uh, even finish uh of the guns and uh, uh calibers uh you know a lot of the early ones were the breech loaders paper cartridge used the percussion cap and then went to the cartridges later uh, this was used a lot in the civil war after the civil war the 5070 uh cartridge was very very popular uh especially right after the civil war i think maybe right near the end and uh that was used in some of the old uh oh uh, like springfield you know muzzle loaders uh when they were you know, reconfigured and the breech cut out you know to start the trend toward the uh, trap door at Springfield a lot of them were chambered in I think 50 70 yeah 50 70 and uh, these were as well as in a lot of other cartridges so just wonderful guns uh, many people have them today uh, you know companies making them C sharps you know Shiloh sharps uh, the Italians there's probably others I don't even know about and these aren't cheap you know from shallow sharps or c sharps and all that but just think about it here it is 2024 and i don't know what their wait time is now but last time i heard it was four or five years you know they may have changed it might be longer it might be shorter now i don't know but it's been like that for decades you know it's been a wait long wait period single shot rifle you know, some of you might be watching this and you got a closet full of uh safe full of ar-15s and and you think, well, who would want some stupid thing like that? Yeah, Hickok, of course, he's a little weird. But somebody else must enjoy this kind of thing. <laughs> the, the wait time on this, it's just amazing, isn't it? it? Yeah, it really is. So I'll see you a couple more and I'll let you go. But I just, uh, I, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I didn't help celebrate the 50-year uh, anniversary. I'm going to put these in my pocket because these rounds are a little bit different. You know what's different about them? I think you'll see when I shoot it, okay? My ears back in. I even brought my cowboy hat out for today, the special occasion. So you open up the, the chute, put the torpedo in, and that's a 500 grain torpedo in that case. And I'll let you tell me what kind of powder it's shooting, okay? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that hovering in the air. That's what it would have looked like when Billy Dixon made those famous shots, or that, that one shot, I guess. Let's go over there and see if we can drop something with black powder. The point of aim will be a little different. Uh, I'm just going to try that swinging buffalo down there. All right. I heard him ring, but I didn't see him roll. <laughs> I've got another one. We might as well fire it. We might as well fire it at this uh, gallon jug here. What the heck? Black 500 grains of lead. All right, in front of black powder. <laughs> That's a lot of lead. Now that means I better clean it pretty quickly, right? 
So uh, yeah, the Sharps rifle, uh, 150th anniversary, lots of things I probably could have shared with you. I didn't, I, I just don't have the IQ to remember it. Uh, but you know, a couple of things there, uh, interesting stories. The uh, Hollywood always makes them look uh, easier to hit with, right? Like any firearm. It's interesting in movies how the, uh, the actors are just always such great shots. You know, like Tom Selleck, he shoots that bucket uh, and quigly down under it, right? hundreds and hundreds of yards, man, just pops that thing. And he picks it up and, you know, very quickly, sights it in and hits it, you know? So I, I don't know where these, these uh, guys and gals in the movies get to be such great shots. Uh, Cause I, I try to do that and it's, it's tough, it's tough. But uh, it's fun to see uh, firearms like this in the movies, things that you know about. And they're actually using the real firearms. The one he uses is made by Shiloh Sharps, the same company, it's in 1874. It's a little fancier, he's got the tank side on it, different things. But, uh, and the same with Valdez is coming, you know, it's a, it's a Sharps. That one, that might be an original because that movie was made, I think, before a lot of the reproductions were probably coming out. So, but anyway, same thing. He's shooting it like a mile away. How's Burt Lancaster, with all the movies he made, able to practice enough to be that good? I don't know. But anyway, this one's 4570, and it's a lot of fun to shoot. And I'm glad that uh, 150 years ago, Christian Sharps came up with this particular version. I think he died about 1874. So he came up with the, the originals long before that. But I'm, I'm glad he was around to, uh, to create this. Thank you, Christian Sharps. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms, you can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also, Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com, and also while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.